Hey everybody, Steve here from Bad Monkey Finger Audio. First, I want to let you guys know that I have a bit of a flu, hence the toque and the extra bad eye bags today. So please excuse all of that if you wouldn't mind. So for those of you who watch my channel, some of you may know that I have a revolving door of uh, audio equipment that comes in and out of my apartment all the time. For the most part, what comes and goes are speakers. Um, in fact, I've recently, over the last couple of weeks, picked up another couple of pairs of used speakers, which I'll be discussing in upcoming videos in the relatively near future. Having said that, through my years of experience in audio and having analyzed the sound quality that I've been getting at home, I've come to realize that the bottlenecks in all my systems are the amplifiers. So the amplifiers that I currently have are the Sansui AU666. That's an amplifier from 1971. It's an integrated uh, I had that thing rebuilt several years ago, and it sounds fantastic. It does have its limitations, of course, but it sounds beautiful. Another amplifier I have is a Sugden A48B, which has been heavily modified and sounds fantastic. My third amplifier is an Exposure 2010, the original model. Not the 2010S, not the 2010S2, and not the 2010SD. It's the original 2010 from, uh, I think, around the year 2000. Or so now I'm far from being a rich guy so that generally puts next level amplification out of my reach even on the used market top tier equipment is it's just too costly for me at this time however not long ago I met a person who has been designing and building audio gear top level audio gear for the last 30 years um, after having a discussion with that person about my current situation they suggested to me that I modify my exposure amp. The person states that uh, in doing so, um, I'd be able to extract all of the, the full potential from that exposure 2010 amp, which already has its merits, but it's not perfect like any other amp. Now, of my three amps, I, I wouldn't modify the Sansui. Um, it's, it's a classic from 1971, and I just don't want to mess with it. The Sugden's already been modified, so that's off the table as well. So that, that leaves the, that leaves the uh, exposure open to suggestion. Now, I'm not always a fan of uh, upgrades and modifications to amplifiers because, in fact, sometimes they actually degrade the sound quality of the piece. Um, as a matter of fact, years ago, I owned a Unison Research Unico, the original model. It was a beautiful sounding hybrid uh, amplifier. It was very smooth, very balanced, had a very wide open sound field, and it was just a very pleasing sound. I love that amplifier, but I had to sell it at some point due to some financial constraints that I faced at the time. Now, years later then, I saw another Unico uh, for sale online. Um, this Unico had been modified um, with what was at the time considered top tier modification. Uh, there was a particular company that did two, two different levels of mods on the Unico, and I purchased the one with level two mods, which was supposed to bring the amp into the stratosphere in terms of sound quality. But let me tell you, when I got that thing home and connected to my system, from the moment I, I powered it up and started playing music, I knew that that amp was not for me. It sounded horrible. The, the nice balanced sound of the Unico the, in its original inception was completely ruined by whatever modifications were done. The treble was far too piercing and extended. I mean, I like extended treble, but this was just far too piercing for my liking. Furthermore, the bass, my goodness, the once upon a time nice smooth bass that the Unico had was now all of a sudden really big and thumpy and just not musical whatsoever. So thumpy bass and shrill, uh, bright treble, not for me whatsoever. So that's always a little bit of a concern that I have when I think about modifying any of my existing equipment. Now, despite all that, um, I had several discussions with this audio guru person who I met and uh, they've assured me that their modifications would be able to extract the full potential of the Exposure 2010 without losing its sonic signature. So I'm going to take a gamble. I'm going to take a roll of the dice and I'm going to send the amp off for surgery in the next couple of days. Now, here are my thoughts on the Exposure 2010 in its stock form. The things I like about the exposure are, uh, one, the vocalists are nicely in line with the rest of the sound field. They're not recessed, they're not too up front, they're in a nice plane, in, in the same plane as the rest of the musicians playing along. The sound is balanced from top to bottom, the treble and the bass are not excessive by any stretch of the imagination. 
The amplifier as it stands has very good pace rhythm and timing, also known as Pratt. So that's something that I don't want to lose uh, with any upgrade I may have. Um, the exposure has very good sound field width. I mean, it's, it's very good in that regard. Sound field depth, uh, on the other hand, is, is not bad. It's not great, however, but speaker positioning can help quite a bit in this regard, as you guys probably know. The bass on this amplifier is very fast, and the sound is crisp and nicely delineated. It has very good, what I call, spirit to the music. Um, it's very toe-tapping in its presentation, and it grooves along with the music very nicely. Now, some of the things that I don't like about the amp. The amp seems to run out of gas at moderately high volumes with some of my speakers. It can also sound a little hard when pushed due to the previous point that I mentioned of it running out of power, running out of gas, as I like to say. The amplifier can also get confused with complex music. Furthermore, um, it could have a more palpable 3D image. I mean, the 3D image is there, but it is lacking some body to the performers. The highs are good, as I mentioned, but they could be a little bit more refined. The sound is nice and clear, but it doesn't quite have enough body to it or enough soul to it. As I mentioned, though, it has very good toe-tapping spirit, though. It just doesn't have quite the body to the musicians and to the vocalists that I'd like to hear. Now, the things that I would like to achieve out of the upgrade, I would like to be able to listen to the amplifier all day long without any desire to shut it off. It's pretty close now, but it's not quite there. Aside from that, I really wouldn't mind a more tangible 3D image. As I mentioned, the exposure positions vocalists very well, as well as my Sugden does. However, the Sugden give, gives performers a more tangible body in 3D space than the, expo than the exposure does. Again, the exposure is not bad in this regard, but it's not one of its stronger suits. Another thing I'd like is slightly more silky sound overall. Not veiled or bland, though. I just mean a nice silky sound where the edges to the music, the hard edges to the music are just taken off to a smidgen to make it nice and silky. Another thing I'd like is more authority for increased volume and dynamics without suffering from compression. Uh, when compression occurs is when the sound gets really hard and it's very bothersome to me. Now the potential worries that I have for this upgrade. I'm worried about a loss of sonic balance where no part of the frequency range stands out. As I mentioned, again, it's, it's quite good in this regard as it is right now, so I really don't want to mess with that aspect of this amplifier. Another worry that I have is, uh, as I mentioned about the Unico that I had purchased a few years back, I don't want to end up with thumpy bass. It is a huge turnoff for me to have thumpy one-note bass. Another thing that I want to avoid is treble being too tipped up and overly extended. That's another huge turnoff for me. When the treble is overly piercing by the rest of the sound spectrum and it calls too much attention to itself, I really it's just bah, don't like that whatsoever. Another thing I'm concerned about is the loss of pace, rhythm, and timing because this is really one of the amp's strong suits. Like, really, it's probably its strongest point. Another thing I'm trying to avoid, recessed mid-range. Now, I prefer the mids to be in line with the rest of the spec spectrum. I don't, like, <clears throat> I don't like having to lean in to listen to the music, nor do I like having the vocalist way too far up front by comparison to the rest of the music being played. And last but not least, I don't want to lose the overall character of the amplifier. I do like the amplifier the way it sounds right now. I just would like a little bit more refinement and a little bit more drive for a little extra volume, but more specifically for better dynamic ability. Even at low volumes, I know that having extra current grunt to back up the uh, signal would really work wonders in that regard. Now, I let the audio genius know all of my thoughts about the exposure in its current form, and they assured me that they will not change its sonic signature, but that the upgrades, in fact, will make a huge difference in performance regarding the issues that I have with, its amp, with this amp in its current form. So, the exposure is being sent off for surgery in a couple of days for the guru to work their magic. And so I thought I'd share this experience and process with all of you guys as well. Now, I have high hopes that it's going to turn this Exposure 2010 into something special, since the person doing the work is, is really an audio genius and uh, won't just add high-cost parts 
to make money without actually improving the sound. Now, I'm going to leave the whole thing at that for now, but stay tuned to see how this upgrade path turns out. I'm really excited. I'm on pins and needles. I'm very hopeful. Fingers crossed. So I'll leave it at that for now, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.